Hello, hello. Welcome to I Like Art Podcast. My name is Sarah Glubker, and I'm here today with a very, very special episode. I would like to think of this as part two of a two session interview with my artist friend, Margot Dermody. And if you did not have a chance to tune into last week's episode, I had the amazing, incredible chance to talk to Margot about something that was something that you would never believe. Um, she shared with us a trauma story where she was um, kidnapped and placed in a car and all of these things happened. And she wanted to share her story with my audience. And at the end of the story, I feel like we left everyone hanging because then it led up to her becoming a professional artist and turning to the arts to heal and to move forward with her life and to follow her dreams. So if you missed that last week's episode, I highly encourage you to hit the pause button and go ahead and check that out. It's incredible. What an honor that I had to talk to Margot and share her story for the first time, I believe. And after you listen to that, go ahead and check out Margot Dermby's artwork. Go see what it's like, what her beautiful work looks like, so that you can get an idea of what the artist and the artwork look like together. Or you can go check it out on the station's YouTube channel, which will be linked in the show notes. So today I'm going to be talking again to Margot Dermody. She is an artist living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Born in Maryland, she was exposed to art and science at a young age through her mother, an artist, and her father, a mathematician. She received a BA in economics and an MPS in hotel administration, both from Cornell University. Margot has lived and worked in San Francisco, New York, Boston, and Nashville. Growing up, she moved from Maryland to upstate New York and lived in Rome when she was 12 years old, where she learned Italian. Margot has been exploring and making art for more than 30 years. As a child, she had a passion for ceramics, photography, cooking, sewing, and performance arts. Perf primarily self-taught, she works in acrylic on canvas, wood and paper, as well as in mixed media with photography, collage oil, found materials, and most recently glass. Margot's work includes elements of nature and emotion in a palette that varies from vibrant to monochromatic. So without further ado, I'm so excited to share with you Margot Dermody today on part two of our episode where we talk about her journey as an artist. Welcome, Margot. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. I'm really honored. I'm, I'm very excited to tell my story and sort of fill in a few holes that, you know, the story just changes as you um, go through life and do it more and practice. So um, I am thrilled to be here. Thank I'm you. so happy that you came back. So we kind of left everybody on a little bit of a cliffhanger last week where mm -hmm. we talked about your um, story, uh, your trauma story of being, um, in a car kidnapping and you are, I'm just in awe of you and I want to know more. I know my listeners want to know more because what happens beyond this experience, um, truly changed your life. And before we dive into that part, I want to hear more about you. I know that you recently had an interview released with Mona Lurch of the Art Moms United, and I'm going to have that link in the show notes too, for you guys to go check out if you want to hear some of um, Margo's backstory through that. But we're also here to talk about that and some other things. And so let's start out with Margo as a young child. What was your childhood like? When did you know you were an artist? describe your journey and, um, share as much as you like, let us know. Um, what were you like when you were a kiddo? Oh boy. You know, it's taken some deep work to go back that far. I will say, because I'm the type of person that I live and I move on and I don't look back a whole lot, or at least I don't stare back. So I've really had to work at it lately, but I was the oldest of four and, uh, there were three girls and we were two years apart and so I was, um, you know, the leader, I would say, <laughs> and a little bossy, you know, like you do this, you do that. We would play and very creative. And I had a big imagination. And I do remember, you know, uh, I grew up in Maryland until I was 13 and um, then went to my dad was at University of Maryland, um, went to Italy for a year on a sabbatical. He was he did a work sabbatical. So they just threw us into an Italian school and said, 
you'll learn the language. And uh, we did, we had to. So that's when I really started getting into art because I couldn't speak Italian. So I was working on ceramics and all my drawings and I bring them home to my mom. And my mom is an artist and she was very supportive of the arts and culture. And so she saved little pieces that we've had. And um, anyway, so that's my childhood. And then there, the fourth, my brother was born when I was 13. Okay. And then we moved to Ithaca, New York. And I got very shy, got into academics because I didn't know anyone. I was very outgoing when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But my memories are more uh, just climbing trees outside, uh, going to the library and getting stacks of books to read. It was all close. And then um, ah, I played piano. I was the Pied Piper in a play. I played recorder. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so I was, I was a crazy little kid. Um, yeah. Very so, active. So that's, that's oldest of four and very oldest active. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you were in Italy and then you came back. And what happened after that? Did you pursue art right away? after high school, um, you've had a journey between now, uh, uh, then and now. Well, I kind of rebelled against the artist in me. You know, my mom kept saying, you're an artist, you're an artist. And I just wanted to be who I was. And mm -hmm. so I kept seeing myself as a professional, as a business person. And I mentioned this in Mona's uh, podcast. I worked for a doctor is one of my jobs and thought maybe I, I'd go to medical school. But that did not happen. I ended up uh, deciding to go into economics and go into business. And um, but just going back a little bit, um, my childhood looks like it was all beautiful and very privileged. And I had a ton of wonderful opportunities. But that year when I was 12, going to an Italian school and I was the only girl in the class was very traumatic for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was a small class. And I remember having this feeling like, you know, I hope my parents don't get divorced. And five years later, they got divorced. So when I was going off to college, my parents had just separated and they were getting a divorce. And I came back and lived with my dad. And I just had to get away. I had to get away. I wanted to like cope. And I wanted to, I wanted to make money. I wanted to be successful. I started building my resume. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, I, um, thought, what do I want to, you know, I majored in economics and I thought, what do I want to do with my life? And, and so I will say that I really didn't pursue arts for a long time. I, I was very creative and artistic um, in everything I did, but I focused on being, I, I was seven to eight years in business in New York and Boston. I became director of sales and marketing for the Colonnade Hotel, for the Drake Hotel, a Barbados resort uh, with Marriott. And I really got good at contracts. I got good at relationships and clients. And then I um, had children. We moved and we had children. And so we moved to Boston. My husband had, we were in New York at the time that I had all those jobs. And um, this is what happens. Sarah, you're gonna have to kick me out and whatever. My story just goes <laughs> on so much. No, so I, I love it. We wanna world. know. Yeah, so I had my first child when I was working in a hotel as director of sales, the Colonnade in Boston. And by my second child, I said, I need to take a break. And mm -hmm. that's when my husband got a new job in Nashville and we moved to Nashville. And after about a year of working out a lot and not doing anything work-wise, um, I got an adjunct teaching job at Belmont University and started teaching, creating courses, writing academic journals. Um, and I did that for 15 years. I have to kind of remind myself with my notes how long I did. So that was path two in my career. Path three was I got back into business. I was heading up this um, camp for children at Belmont and the speakers were all different fields. And someone talked about real estate and how you could do real estate anywhere in the world and you could travel. And I thought that's what I did in graduate school. I think I skipped graduate school. I think maybe I am a little bit AHD, whatever. Um, just, yeah, I think I'm it's a little okay. bit, everybody talks about being all over the place and I, that's my right brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the creative part of me. Mm -hmm. My left brain is very analytical and then I go back and forth. Mm -hmm. 
But anyway, what was I talking about there? You went um, to graduate school. So you were be- reversing the graduate school for a hot second. Yes, I want to get back. So I did that in hotel administration. And I went straight into um, all of the jobs that I did, mm-hmm. um, marketing in hotels. Mm-hmm. And when I got into real estate, that was like returning back to permanent accommodations. So uh, where hotels are transient, you've got the inventory of 365 days for many years out. I got good at that. I thought, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to just affiliate myself with a brand, with a realty company, and I'm going to do real estate. Um, so I did that for many, many years before coming to Pittsburgh. And I got into art. Um, well, I'm going to back up and go in the middle. As I'm going to tell you when I really got into art and painting. And then professionally, I got into art when I moved to Pittsburgh. Okay. So when I was taking, when I was teaching at Belmont, I took courses and was at Cheekwood Botanical Gardens. And I did this with a friend of mine and I loved it. I did watercolor painting and I thought, okay, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. This is my dream. And so I kept doing artistic things. I kept dabbling in it, but I just had too much income coming in. I was contributing to the household Mm -hmm. and I had my jobs and I just, it wasn't the right time. Mm -hmm. But before we left Nashville, I, we were, we were building a house. So that was a very artistic thing with an architect. And I built in this house plan, I built an art studio. Yeah. So I knew I was going to be an artist, but it took me to moving here. So we, we did not build the house. We sold it back to the de- developer with the plans. Oh, really? And yeah, we had to do that. Um, so because he got a better offer at Pittsburgh. So oh. we thought, okay, we're going to do this adventure and we're going to, we've been in Nashville over 25 years. Mm-hmm. Our kids were gone and, um, yeah, so we were ready for something. And that's when I became really into a daily art practice. And I dove into it and said, okay, I'm going to be an artist until someone proves I'm not an artist. But I always had that in my head. Mm. I just kind of, you know, reacted to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know you having to back to I... the kidnapping story. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get back to that because my life changed before and after. So if you want to ask me questions about that, or if you want me to talk about it, I am glad to. Yeah. So I just want to say, I think it's really cool to go through and hear about the different chapters in your professional journey. Mm -hmm. And my goal here with my podcast is not to turn a bunch of people into, um, professional artists. So I'm not here to tell everybody to quit their job and become an artist. I think it's really interesting to hear you talk about how in, um, in the middle of being a mom and having your full-time job, you were curious and you and a friend started taking watercolor classes. And I think it's really important to talk about that because at that time you weren't taking these classes with the intention of quitting everything and becoming a professional artist. So, um, and I think that is very encouraging for my listeners because so much emphasis, there's so much emphasis in our culture now to, um, invest in our education only if you plan on monetizing what you learned, right? And what about investing in a creative calling just for the sake of, because you're getting that nudge to do the thing and you're curious. And it also fulfilled a part of you at that time that you needed. Maybe you needed, you were feeling the urge to learn something because you're a lifelong learner. Maybe you were um, feeling the need to express yourself and, and have this time with your friend, also learn something new. And to use art um, as a way of fulfilling a part of you that needs to be fulfilled. But you also recognize that you have this financial obligation to your family and you wanted to contribute in that way. And I'm a hundred percent for that, for people. um, I know as artists, we're all dreamers. And um, 
I'm all for being financially responsible. And, you know, I have teenagers now and it doesn't get cheaper. So, um, it's a real thing where, you know, this is the adulting where we need to, um, pay our bills and do all those things. So not to just completely, you know, but to honor that creative urge is, is so cool. And I'm, I'm just in awe that you made that time for yourself. And I think that's something to be celebrated for sure. Okay. I had to say that because (laughs) again, my goal is not to turn everybody into a professional artist. And truly, I think artists work so hard and, um, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of work to, to get paid and to, to be able to achieve that level, um, right away. So it's a building process. Anyway, now we're going to touch on your trauma story. Okay. When I'm, I'm, I'm kind of plugging in your timeline and I'm thinking about what you have done when and where were you again to kind of not to bring you back to that story again, but yeah. where did That's this fit into, to Margo's career path and how you said it was a before and after moment. So your life I before know, to, and your life after when exactly was, when did I had to write it all down because yes. I was like, Oh my gosh, when was all this happening? Mm-hmm. Um, So I was in business in New York and Boston in the Mm eighties and then we moved to Nashville in the early nineties. And Mm -hmm. so I left Belmont university in 2006. I spent a year doing both real estate and teaching Mm -hmm. 2005. So the whole, the kidnapping happened the year that my son was a senior in high school, 2008. Okay. So 14 years ago. And mm-hmm. I was doing real estate. Okay. I was back in business as an entrepreneur working for a really great company, a wonderful brand. I'm trying to leave names out like brands yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. um, and so I was actively, let's see, what else was I doing? I was, I'd been playing competitive tennis for a while. Um, so I, that was good for me to really get the competition going mm-hmm. and keep it shape and what's important is before kidnapping and after I kind of got back with the activities I got back to things that I loved as a child after kidnapping Mm -hmm. touch on that so I was a realtor um after it happened I just have to tell you that I felt so grateful I was back in work the next day everybody Mm. thought why are you here and I said because where else would I be I have I have clients that need to help. I'm selling their house. One of them, I was rebuilding an exterior to get it to sell. Mm. The other one had to come to closing with a lot of money mm. and they needed me. And I wanted to be needed. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, do you want to sit at home while this guy is going around and we don't know where he is? Oh. <clears throat> so I was very grateful to have survived. Mm-hmm. It was like, I just, I don't know. It was so amazing how I felt. Um, but anyway, that happened. And then, um, I knew throughout, I don't know if I emphasize this enough that I just had the faith that I was going to get through this, that I was Mm going to get back to my safety and home because my son was graduating from high school. He was playing soccer. They won state. I was not ready to leave the world. Right. I was going to work this out and I negotiated for my life. So anyway, what did we do after we got rescued dogs because the kids were all, they were all away at college Mm -hmm. and we'd had this lab growing up and I remember when my son turned 18 he said that's what I want is a I want a lab for my birthday and I said no you're gonna get a dog when you can you're off right now Mm -hmm. we're not we're not doing this but we decided we wanted well all you know I fell in love with greyhounds because they look like horses to me Mm because they have the gate the horses and there was a rescue organization so I came home and I said, hey, you know what kind of dog I want? And anyway, we got very involved in the Greyhound Rescue Organization. We got mm. one and then the next year we got another. And then my husband kept wanting a third. <laughs> and I'm like, you gotta be kidding. No. So um, what else? When did uh, the art, when did you, because of what you went through, you were, how long afterward did you continue working in real estate? And then when did your art did it take time for you to start working in your art or was that part of your healing yes. process right away? Yes, it did. It did. In fact, that's why I'm going through so much healing right now. If you haven't noticed mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> what, what I really, after that trauma, I felt extreme compassion for myself 
and for other people who have gone through trauma. And one of the reasons I want to go through the story is that there is so much that we all can learn about situational awareness and young people can learn to prevent things to happen because mm -hmm. things can happen to you, to me, to anyone. And um, in terms of my art, I, I still had to keep that dream on the back burner. And what I did artistically and creatively, I, I think of it more as a lot of creative things. I wrote journals and papers. I, I went back to dancing. So I did more performance art. Mm -hmm. So here's what I did. Mm -hmm. I bought a horse. I bought a horse. That was my dream as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I am doing it. And I remember sitting at dinner with friends of mine and she was a breast cancer survivor. And I, my husband says, yeah, but Christopher Reeve, you know, there's danger in a horse. And she said, buy the horse. Mm. So I ended up, um, I had been riding for three or four years before with someone else's horse. Mm -hmm. And so I got back into riding. And so that's a bit of a, it sounds funny, but there's an art to horsemanship. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely the animal. So mm -hmm. I was into the performance of that. And then I got back into dancing because when I was doing real estate, I don't know if you remember, because you're much younger and so are a lot of people in the audience, but real estate took a dive in 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I bought a house in 06. Was, so yeah, <laughs> it was like no doc. It was easy to get all the things in 05, 06. Yes. And then like the wild west. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you couldn't get a loan. So I thought, well, what do I do? I did all my work in the morning and I went to dance and I went to work out and sweat. So I did a lot of Zumba dancing and I got mm -hmm. back to like just being a kid mm -hmm. and dancing was, that's what I did. I was a ballet dancer had my ballet pink. I have, mm -hmm. I was um, a modern dancer in college. I was a gymnast. So instead of just doing things culturally that I thought I should do, like play tennis, which I was really good at. I was a, a, even like a 4-0 singles player at one point, but um, I wanted to get back to things that were more artistic mm -hmm. I just wanted to like it was just fun so I did that and traveled mm -hmm. all of a sudden the kids were away in college mm -hmm. so where do we go Japan Germany Italy New Zealand and I'm really fortunate my husband is a scientist and in addition to being a physician and he through his scientific work got to be keynote speakers at places I got to come along to these conferences and so we did a lot and he was his transportation and accommodations were paid mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. so but travel was so much a part of my life growing up mm -hmm. and I and it's to me such an inspiration for art and who I am and that's why I got I went into the hotel travel program at mm -hmm. Cornell I didn't want to just be an accountant in an MBA I I was more creative and I marketing and but that's mm -hmm. part of my story too Mm -hmm. That's part of my story and why I lost myself, but let, what else? Okay. I'm going to ask you the next question. Good. Good. All right. So you went down this, you've had a, a path with different chapters and I had the opportunity to interview our mutual friend, Celine Gabrielle. And yeah. I don't know if you caught that interview, but I love that interview so much. And Celine also had a previous career yes. and I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Celine, but, um, I know for her, she had the nudge to become an artist when she was, uh, graduated from high school and she had a, a fork in the road moment where she didn't know which direction she wanted to go. She went into aesthetics, um, became an aesthetician and, um, had her own business for many years. And then she ended up going, um, that didn't, she ended up changing and becoming an artist over time. And I had asked her, um, do you regret not having, um, and I feel like you guys are going to have the same answer, but I just want to hear your spin on it. But you have all those years where you could have been a practicing artist, but you weren't. And what's your take on that, Margot? What do you believe? Um, because you didn't pursue art right away and now you're an artist, how do you feel about those other chapters in your life and how do they relate to what you're doing now? They, yeah, great question. Great, great question. Um, they totally relate to what I'm doing now because I think I just wasn't ready to know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what questions I wanted to ask when I did my art. I didn't know who I was at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I faked it. 
<laughs> I, I, I was really good at faking it. Um, I act, everybody thought I was very confident, but, but inside me, don't ask me what book I like, what's my favorite color. I just really, it was whatever you, if you like that, oh, I like that color in your background, Sarah. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, I was very good at interrelating. And um, so, no, I totally uh, feel like all my experiences were good. I value all of them. I don't regret anything in mm -hmm. terms of that. Mm -hmm. It's all part of who I am and it, and it, yeah. all of that background. So if I create an art piece that takes 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes plus all those years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's good. not, it's, it's mm -hmm. I also see, because I had the chance to interview you twice, your level of organization is beyond, um, and I've been interviewing artists for this podcast, but I also had a past job where I was, um, working with artists and, um, not all of the artists are as organized as you are. And I will say that all of, all of the things that you have done leading up to this moment has, um, that those are all things that you have that is an edge above a lot of artists too, as far as being articulate, writing down your ideas, being thorough, um, writing and writing all of those publications that you had written in the past. All of those things are tools in your toolbox that you can use now as an artist. So you have your creative practice, but then you also have all of these, um, business principles and, um, you're, you are very business-like, but you are create like you have both sides and yeah, that is something right, to be celebrated. Right, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I am a firm believer that we all have a different path and whatever path we're on that takes us to where we are today is the path it was meant for our lives. So I just cool. wanted to touch on that. Okay. Can you, because this is an audio format and I will have this posted on my YouTube channel, you do have some of your art pieces in the background, but kind of, I would love for you to describe your work, um, for my listeners and for my viewers talk in, in depth as in depth or not in depth as you want, but describe your artwork. What does it look like? Um, if you want to talk about what it means, you have a couple different, you know, you have your 3d work and your 2d work. So tell us all about Margot's artwork that you are creating today. Okay. What, you know, every day, great question. And every day is a new day. And I never know really what I'm going to do. But some of the series I'm working on are, um, or what I've done. Let me, let me say what I've done in the recent past. Well, let me go back a few years because it's been five years. Mm -hmm. um, I started just, everything was about feelings. And intuitive and I would you could really feel the feelings one of my pieces was called compassion and it got into a show and now it's with a collector um very modern non-objective most of them um so I'm drawn to abstraction because I get into a zone when I paint a lot of it's very ethereal and it's passing and it's um sometimes you can just really feel the spiritualness in my art um mm -hmm. And I, I was originally naming them things like Hope, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is a famous painting, you know, Barack Obama's, you know, um, and different feelings. And then I, I decided, okay, let's, let's dig here. What, a, you know, what am I feeling? And I really love bringing nature into the home. So mm -hmm. I like the colors of nature, blue, green, um, white, uh, you know, I like bringing light into the paintings and um, how else would I describe? So, and I even like, I like, I like black and white. Mm -hmm. So I like that too. So a lot of pastels, I would say. And then recently with feeling a lot of emotion and passion, I did the Paris series, which was vibrant, filled with love, light. And now I'm going to do uh, a series, um, I think I'm going to call it Amalfi because mm. it's such a beautiful place that I'm going to do it both in marble because I have Mediterranean blue marble that I got mm. and nice. different shades of uh, blue and green and clear glass and do some sculptural pieces and then also some paintings. So I'm working on the palette now. I have gessoed some pieces for that, but I'm still, I'm just waiting for the feeling to come. Mm -hmm. I have to be... I was trying to slow it down a little bit and work on a little bit more intentional pieces 
And the recent series that I did that is pretty interesting, and it's been um, with some help of a person who's taught me a lot of cold shop work at the Glass Center is called Nimbus Series. Mm -hmm. And the Carrera Marble is like a cloud, and it's difficult to see, but there it is there. Mm -hmm. Um, That's so um, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And then the glass, and you really need to see it from all angles, but Mm -hmm. it is... um, The process is that we take glass and we cast it. So you take clay models and then you do a silica um, plaster over it and then you kiln form it. You put it in the kiln, you take it out and then you attach it with epoxy resin Mm. called hexagon. And then with that shape that you create and then the shape and the idea that you have for the sculpture, you create a piece that you start working And you carve out with an axle grinder and the belts. And I never went to shop. I did home ec when I was like French cooking was my high school class that I did. So anyway, Mm -hmm. um, I am learning about safety glasses, putting my hair back, a hat, Mm -hmm. you know, the mask. I love your videos. Yeah, they're all masks. Instagram reels of you and your process working on these pieces. So so everyone needs to check it out. Yeah. And I love the collaboration of glass because painting for me is very, um, it's very uh, solo, mm-hmm. introverted, and I love that because part of me is very much, I like to work by myself, mm-hmm. but I also found a person who I create and we think a lot alike. So we'll look at the shape and we'll think, let's take some off here. Mm-hmm. Let's put this in a diamond cutter and just carve that one. And we just, from one mark or shape to another, we just keep working it until we think, okay, we love it. And then we start polishing. And that's my latest thing. Mm -hmm. He is such a perfectionist with polishing. And I'm kind of like more of a, so some of my paintings are also very loose marks. Mm -hmm. And I will go in and do a layer and then I will leave. And then I'll do another layer with a different color. And then I'll come back and I do, and I'll do it over time. And the large abstract pieces take me months to do. And I get obsessed by a little mark. Mm -hmm. And I also sometimes take, the marks off. I do a lot of subtraction mm-hmm. from the work. So it's not all addition. It's sometimes it's bringing the negative space back. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's where I am today. I mm-hmm. really, I, I, I have so many ideas in my head and not enough time, yes. but what else is new? We all feel like that, whether you're working three jobs or one thing, or mm-hmm. that's a good, good place to be. Yeah. Oh, I love your work. And I think it's really um, captivating and the layers. I'm not an abstract artist and I know that that's challenging and it is not easy to create successful abstract pieces, but you do such a beautiful job and, um, someday I'll become one of your collectors. I already, I just know it. I can't wait. And you're, it's really, I really appreciate how you, um, what is it? how you're not limiting yourself to one style. I'm not going to say style, but Mm -hmm. let's talk about your palette. So your palette varies. You have a series that's a little bit more monochromatic um, Mm -hmm. and there's a mood and then, but then you allow yourself to create this vibrant Paris series that has a whole different Mm -hmm. feeling to it. And it's so exciting to see your work come out and have these different feelings and, um, how you allow yourself to do that. You don't, um, put yourself in one box and say, I only work in pastels and, or I only work in 2d you're allowing your, you're following that curiosity and, um, and also learning something new. I mean, you could be curious about working in glass, but maybe putting on the back burner and saying, well, maybe in a couple of years, I'll get to that. But Um, you're so in the moment, you're so present. And I just really think that's inspiring for other artists to see that and to give yourself permission to, um, to change and evolve and try new things. And, um, and I, I love the idea of your new series being both glass and painting together. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm excited about that. I think it can be done. Anything can be done. So, uh, but just to to have that, you know, 
I, I mean, I struggled for a while. Is my work cohesive? And I remember having a studio visit with an artist, um, artist curator and someone who's, she says, yes, you have a cohesive body of work. So that helped me feel better about it. I do like, I do think it's important for me to not just do like a one piece and another piece. I love working in series. Mm -hmm. Knowing it gets me in the flow. Some of it, I can say it didn't make it. I can do a quality check. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I can say, I like the direction it went. Mm -hmm. So, and I got that. I really, by listening to podcasts, Create Magazine, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, there was a lot of information on that. And my husband, he said, you know, just do the same thing. You know, the haystacks, keep mm -hmm. doing them, doing them, and you just get better. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's fun to explore. That's, that's what I love to do. Yes. So, Are you creating cool. this series, this new series with um, space in mind or an exhibition date, or are you creating it and then you're pursuing? Um... This one, I'm not, this one, okay. I'm not, I, I am ready to start. I have really not promoted or applied to put my work in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know, I'm not going to go into anything. I, we're into manifesting a little bit, but yeah. I am ready to start having more studio visits. And also I've, I've got some connections that I'm hope I'm hopeful uh, okay. that I can run some things, but I'm not making this with that in, in you know, I, one thing I want to say um, that I did, one thing I did early on is I got a creative coach. Mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. she taught for many, many years and she would just, she would just say, okay, go read about this, go watch this. And then she told me, cause I said, what am I? What's my style? She says, you are not one style. You are mm -hmm. you, your marks are individual. You can be whoever you want to be. Her name's Carrie Side. Mm. And I do a group with her on a bi-weekly every other week with a couple people and she's terrific. She's um, just very creative and an artist. She mm. makes some beautiful original mixed media with silk and brings mm. in the light with um, a box, shadow box. It's really, really sculptural work. And who okay. knows where she'll go with that, but she's very, she's good. So We're that's have a link. Thing. A link to her yes. in the show notes. I will. Yes. That's wonderful. Okay. Margo, can we keep asking you questions? Yes. Okay. Please. Let's see. Da, 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 da. All right. Back. Last question about your um, survival story. Is there, okay. So if somebody went through something very traumatic, um, is there a piece of advice that you would like to share with someone as far as using art and creativity to overcome trauma and process trauma. Um, a, yes. One I piece think. of advice or some kind of advice. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I, I like to share experiences and let people give their own advice. Cause I've learned that that's probably the best, but mm -hmm. I will say that having, um, I'm grateful that I was able to share my story. So it is important to share your story with someone. I was not ready to go on a podcast level or to write it and put it out. I remember my sister saying, do you want to get on Oprah? I can get you on Oprah. I'm like, no, no. I just wanted to be a survivor and not a celebrity victim. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't ready. But what I would say is that find, I had a spiritual group that I could share my story with, um, very, very supportive. And then I started just living every day. Like it was the only day I had. So that's what I did differently. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had dreams. I wanted to, and in fact, it was, I was laughing about it because now my passwords don't have it, but I used to have live in my passwords, mm. <laughs> and, you know, and then move on. It doesn't mm -hmm. define you. Forgive yourself be light, find what you love and go back to that. What mm -hmm. gives you energy? Try to find your true nature, what's in your heart. And the last thing is that you can start over anytime. You can start your day over anytime. Get the negative thoughts out, question the negative thoughts, um, keep things fresh. Mm -hmm this over and over because you don't want to you know just do the same thing over and over again because you will your heart won't be in it mm -hmm. so for me that's important and then finally so this is a lot of mm -hmm. experiences is keep learning and growing keep mm. learning. that's why that artist residency with glass I was so 
interested in glass, I went to an auction and asked so many questions. They said, you need to apply for the artist residency. And I said, really? What, what's that about? And I was just intrigued. And I looked around my house and I had so much glass because I liked the way it catches light, spins it. Mm. And I thought, I love glass. Let's do it. Um, so. Oh, that's so beautiful. I think anybody oh, can, take, I think anybody can take that advice. Okay. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much Good. for sharing that. Sure. And what about you talk about light a lot and mm-hmm. seeking the light Mm-hmm. and the importance of seeking the light. Is there anything you want to share here about that? Because that's a huge theme for you in your everyday life and in your artwork. I know in um, your Instagram posts, you talk about that. Wow. And um, that's so huge half of the artists. <laughs> I feel like half of the artists do because light is so important. It symbolizes everything, you know, it symbolizes uh, the universe well, for me, it's that I really think it's important to go through the darkness and get to the light. I love that idea that we need rest and we rest in dark and that we wake up and it's like sunrise mm-hmm. and then sunset. Um, so light for me is also about feeling good about myself and feeling mentally stable Mm -hmm. and a lot of my work has to do with experience also with how we can get down our thoughts can just tell us bad things and we can get into a depression I've seen it with people I love Mm -hmm. so for me getting to the light is how you live that day in a very um uh, I don't know how you get through every day and um And so it's more than just the light reflecting on the artwork. It's also the symbol of light Mm -hmm. that is important to me. Yeah. I don't know if I heard it enough. Oh, Margo, that is, that's like your mic drop moment right there. That is so good. I, oh my goodness. And that's a huge, I'm so glad that we talked about that and that you talked about it just now, because that's such a huge message. I feel for you, that's a big message that you put out there. I think the first time I heard you say that was in our group, um, in our pep rally group that Celine Gabrielle put together. That's how I got to know you more. And I immediately thought, oh my goodness, I need to talk to this person more because that is a huge problem that we have right now. The world feels like such a dark place and Mm -hmm coming out of the last couple of years, we need more people like you. We need more of the light. We all need to seek not just creativity and art, but what brings us joy and to really heal those parts of us. And like you said, seize the day and take on the moment. So thank you so much for sharing that. And your work embodies the light. It is, it is light and fresh and, um, makes you feel good. And it's yeah. just, it's just really cool to hear you talk about that and, and, um, talk about your life and how that's connected. Okay. Are you ready to switch gears a little bit? Sure. Or is there anything else you want to add to that? No. Okay. Really. Margo, so I'm really interested. Okay. You live in Pittsburgh and, um, you're an artist. You also ride horses. You have all of these things going on, what does a typical day look like for you? Just, just because I'm curious. Okay. Well, I'm very much a morning person and become more of a morning person. Um, because I don't know, we're getting out of the dark into the light. There's Mm -hmm. so many possibilities of the morning. And so I do have a lot of routines and I've become better at my routines. So I'm really into that. I, I, read I have readers and then I write things in the morning I also um have started since we lost our dog a few years ago our third greyhound um I started going out to walk with my husband and we walk about 5 30 in the morning and so reading meditating meditating for me is quieting my mind so I can open in and listen to things and so I can figure out like what is really the most important thing? If I can think of two things I really need to get done. This is a day that I have. I'm so joyful to have this day. What do I need to do? And then just say, I did it. I did it. 
Meditation's good. It's listening to mm -hmm. whatever power you think. Praying is for me also important when you can't do anything, mm -hmm. then at least you can pray for that person. So that's mm -hmm. important. So my routine is all of that alone work mm -hmm. and the movement. Movement's very, very important for me because it's just like getting the rhythm, you get regulated. Um, there's a lot, if you haven't read the book, what happened to you, Oprah Winfrey mm. and Bruce Perry, there's a lot about, uh, the process of healing and coping with trauma and just getting into a good place of life. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Back to, so then, um, alone work in my studio, I've tried to start and I do it. I don't do it every day, but daily drawing where I just let like a pen and I just do, I look at an object or I think about a feeling or just do a pattern or whatever, mm. scribble, whatever, get, mm -hmm. get it out of my head, get it, get something going. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, when I'm working by myself, well, I remember you saying this with someone, I don't really, really, really have a typical day. And that's what I love about being an artist. I can mm -hmm. sort of do it when I feel the energy come, when I feel like I'm ready and I'm creative and I'm going to get into the flow. So when I work at Pittsburgh Glass Center, I schedule mm -hmm. and that's good. It's a good discipline mm -hmm. to have it on the schedule because the week before I email and I go, okay, this is when I want to rent. What is your schedule like with the person I work with, Chris Ross? So, but other than that, it's, um, it's just getting things done and, you know, doing life and mm -hmm. then doing my art. At the same mm -hmm. time. So I like, to, I like to paint in the morning and then mm. leave it and come back to it. Okay. So, there you go. Oh, sounds amazing. Okay. Let's see. Well, I said, I had a question aside from being a painter or studio artist, what do you like to do that fuels your creative spirit? What do you like to do as a hobby that is creative? You kind of touched on, touched on you those already know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and then the culture and travel. That's another thing. Yeah. You know, I love that. Anything that gives me energy so that I can use that energy to create. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to leave a little time yes. for, yes, yes, yes. For one thing. Yeah. Yep, we have time. What is a dream project or collaboration for you? Okay. Um, I am hoping, cause we do have plans of person that I'm working with at the glass center to collaborate on sculpture. Mm. So I'm excited about that to actually have it in our heads, design it and work together and call mm -hmm. it because as an artist, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not collaborate? You know, and I feel like that's the, that is a, a logical thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. That's my dream project to, to collaborate with um, on sculpture work. Oh, I love so, it. I can't wait yeah. to see it. Yeah. Do you have um, something exciting coming up that you want to share with us? A show yes. or um, yeah. Tell us what I you have coming up for the rest that. of the year. It's kind of amazing that um, I've been talking to a person I was referred as an artist by a judge. And it's interesting that it's coming out now as I tell my story about, you know, testifying in court, but I'm going to have a solo show in the art in the courthouse, what? In the federal courthouse here. I know, I know. So I guess the people that are going to see it are going to be like all the attorneys and, but it's going to be on the mid, mid October through December. And I get, they, they have a bio for me and I have one, two, three, three walls. So I did a proposal and there's an artist right now who, funny enough, got married in Amalfi. Mm. <laughs> and um, I don't know her, but I'd like to meet her because that's kind of cool. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to go on from October to through December. The other thing I have going on is I'm going to curate and have art in a show um, in a small gallery that mm -hmm. uh, I've been involved with. And it's going to call it's going to be called Creation Unfolding at Undiscovered. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be October 8th, oh, October nice. 8th. Month. Yeah. Oh, so that will be a group of five artists and okay. one is a sculptor and another one is mixed media photographer, uh, another painter who I need to meet. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I have been showing, this will be the third show in that gallery. Okay. So that's kind of, nice. we, we tend to have a spring show and a fall show. Okay. And um, so I'm excited about that. And I, I have so much to to also apply for. I took a little bit of a break, I think this summer to mm -hmm. pause and slow down because mm -hmm. it comes at you left and right. All of the, you know, apply for this, apply for that. Yes. But, oh man, 
you I know. know. It can, so, it can be yeah. overwhelming in summer, you know, if you want to do summer things. That and takes then, up time and I'm going to also be in the first, um, uh, oh gosh, you're not, uh, okay, Mona, don't get mad at me that I'm forgetting, but United Artists, oh man, it's not Art Month United, but yeah. it's, it's, it's their first edition of the magazine that Mona's coming out with. <gasps> yeah. So we'll have to put that in the show notes because I'm forgetting the name. So okay. I'm going to be a artist in that so is I'm excited her, about that is it her publication yes okay yes oh man I know she has a few different names I don't want to mess it up either but Mona Lurch with Art Moms United, United it's Women's Art, Art Move Women's Art United yeah. maybe United Art Movement Women's yes. United Art Movement it's an international um inaugural edition so I'm excited about that and I just want to get kind of organized and give myself the freedom to do quality work that mm-hmm. I love. That's what I want to do. I want to think like museum quality. Someone had mm-hmm. that in his, all his description of his work. And I thought, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do what you're doing and then make it museum quality. Mm-hmm. So my first show was in a museum. So I got really lucky on that. When I got into the Associated Artist of Pittsburgh, I was in the Westmoreland Museum of American Art. And my sons came to visit. That was amazing. Um, Last thing that's up for me is I'm going to take another trip in September. I'm going to go to Cambridge, England, Mm. outside of London. And it's through another one of my husbands. He's an editor Mm -hmm. for an international journal in science. And Mm -hmm. I get to go. And one of my best friends is, I'm going to see her. She lives in the area. I think her town is Abbotsford. So best friends because we met in New Zealand and we have stayed in contact through social media. Wow. So I'm excited to know. And other than that, I hope also to visit my sons in LA and Austin. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've got. Sounds like you have a great end of the year. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see, see it all unfold. Okay. We're going to have, if you have time, rapid round of questions. Yep. But before that, how can we best support you um, to sign up your mailing list, uh, purchase, print your um, your artwork? Tell us all of the things, your website. Yes. Well, if you're at all interested in following my journey, go on my website, which is margodermody.com mm-hmm. and just join mm-hmm. my mailing list because I only send it out once a month or every other month. But mm-hmm. what I do is put my shows and where my art is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I blog on that too. So that's number one. Number two, Instagram. I am rebuilding an account. So that is also just Margo Dermody. Mm-hmm. So at Margo Dermody. And that's really me. That's really me there. And um, on Facebook. So here's another development. I have been toying around and this came through my meditation um, a, a couple of weeks ago. I had thought about coming back to art when I talked to Mona in the podcast, but now I've decided to do something broader and everybody that I knew just kept saying, you've got so much courage. And I thought, yeah, let's courage is what it's about. So I'm developing a group and, and right now it's on Facebook called courage to create. Ooh. And it's for anyone, anyone that creates anything. If you like to create, you know, food, if you like to create, um, and explore things in your home. Creativity is just so important to Mm -hmm. feeling good, feeling the Mm -hmm. joy. It's the last step in dealing, getting your anxiety away. If you create, you don't feel anxious because you're so present. So, Mm -hmm. you know, even like putting nail polish on, you're so present that you can't feel the anxiety. So I love it. And that's my, so I'm also going to launch it on Instagram, but I wanted, to, what I did is I took my Margot Dermody art and I just called it courage to create mm. Margot Dermody. Mm. So go on that if you're interested. And what I'd like to do with it is um, just help and encourage people to mm-hmm. come back and share their work and um, get feedback without judgment. And, mm. and I love a lot of your guests talked about looking at her art without judging it. Mm-hmm. judging is good because you're judging quality, but it can be, it can hurt you too. Mm-hmm. So easy, easy. You know, yes. that's, that's what I want to do. Um, oh, I love that Margo. That's so exciting. Yeah. So I can't wait. 
I'm gonna have to join that group. Is it a private yes, group? Please. It's right now it's public. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, haven't figured out, I haven't really figured out the launch. I'm, yeah. I just decided if I don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. Mm -hmm. And it is time. It's definitely time. And so I am doing things imperfectly. I'm just mm -hmm. doing, just trying to be who I am. Yeah. So uh, I and love it's, it. it's focusing on having the courage and creating mm -hmm. two very important things to be yes. an artist and being a good person, just being healthy. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, that's so good. Margo, I can't wait. I'm so excited to see all of these amazing things happen in your life. And now for the important questions, the rapid round. Are you ready? Okay. Is there anything else you want to share before we hit the rapid round? I don't think so. I'm going to look to see just in case, you know me, I'm pretty thorough. <laughs> Um, no, I think we hit a lot of different things. I, I guess I just want to go back to everybody in their life is going to have challenges. It's going to have trauma and the important thing and why I'm so interested in asking the question, how do we bring light into our lives is just, how do you cope with that? Mm -hmm. How do you move on and how do you find community and how do you, how are you gentle with yourself? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. And with uncertainty, and I love this, and I listen to Martha Beck, I have to give her credit. She's so amazing. Um, with uncertainty, you have to get curious and mm -hmm. get creative. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that happens all the time. So what does that mean? Research, explore, experiment. So now I'm ready for rapid, mm -hmm. rapid questions. All right. Now for the important questions, we're all dying to find out more about you, Margo. Okay. All right. First of all, what is your favorite color? Top of mind for these questions, by the way, no judgment, just whatever yeah. comes to your mind. Yeah. Uh, blue. What shade and, of blue? And midnight, midnight blue. Ooh. The crayon midnight blue. That was my favorite when I was a kid. I would nice. like blue to light. I would shade, you know, mm -hmm. uh, blue, Ooh, that's blue so pretty. Normal. It's the sky and the water. Water is mm -hmm. really important. Mm -hmm. so. But I, I also it. like pink is calming and soothing for me too. this light pink and also hot pink. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny how I go from blue to vibrant. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is. It's that mm -hmm. passion. And then it's the calm. keeping calm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. All right, Margo, work beverage of choice. When you're in your uh, studio, uh, what do you like to sip on? Uh, tea. Chai tea? tea is my favorite. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I love tea. I like coffee in the morning and then it gets bitter to me and I love tea mm -hmm. and I like to have honey in it and milk English style. Mm. So, Ooh, chai tea is I so good. Love the spicy. Yes. Tea. Have you tried oh, Bengal crazy. spice? Have you tried that? It's called Bengal spice. Yeah. It's a, it's a celestial seasonings box, which seems Ooh. like probably not a real tea drinkers tea, but it's kind of like chai and you can find it at the grocery store. It has a tiger on the box. I'll have to I send you some. That. It's very yeah. cinnamony though. It's so good. Okay. okay. A book or a movie mention. You already mentioned that book by Oprah, but are there any other books or movies you want to mention? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Movie. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm just coming out and telling you who, what I like. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I used to fight. He liked action adventures and I like drama. Mm -hmm. So believe it or not. And he would say that's too heavy, deep and real. A Star is Born, believe it or not. Yeah. That's it's tragic, but I have watched it several times. I like memoirs. I like, anyway, so that's a movie that I that I really, I, I think the acting is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think it highlights artists too, mm -hmm. you know, singing and performance. I talked about the recent deals, one with Lady yeah, Gaga. Yeah, Star is Born. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, I, I love that movie that too. Was, I have to just admit, I, I really thought it was entertaining. And, um, you know, I like documentaries, I like mm -hmm. watching about people because mm -hmm. that's important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and in terms of a book, I did mention that one, uh, the way of integrity, Martha Beck is another one. And a fun book is that I did this summer, the book lovers, mm. Emily Henry, and that's just super easy, fun. It's about relationships and editing books. And mm. so, okay. It's, it's it's exploring and digging in. I like it when people discover things about themselves. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I like memoirs. I'm into books. So I'm going to have to check out, check out those books. 
Yeah. All right. Wh- all right. Where do you get your ideas or inspiration? Like for me, I'm driving in my car without anybody in there. And then I get my ideas. Some people to shower. What about you, Margo? Where do you get your ideas? Okay. Again, it's, I mean, I wasn't so lucky all my life, you know, but I do have a pool and I love immersing myself in water. So if it wasn't a pool, it'd be the shower probably, but, or a bath, but Mm -hmm. I swim and I close my eyes and I don't even get my head in. I just meditate and I Mm. let the thoughts get some great ideas. And sometimes I just have a kickboard, but I am just in paradise when I'm swimming. And I had a pool for a while in Nashville and I didn't swim for a while. I was too busy. I mean, who had time? Mm -hmm. So if I'm not swimming, it's also walking. Mm. So walking by myself, Mm -hmm. I can just like let mm-hmm. it come in. Mm-hmm. It's moving meditation for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good. The water one, Andy J pizza. He, uh, I don't know if you heard that interview, but he also likes to be in the water. That, job. that was interesting. <laughs> That's where he gets his ideas. So you got something in common there. Oh, I love it. That's so good. Okay. Walks are always good. All right. Is you're good at a lot of things. I mean, you're an athlete and you're an artist, which can be a rare combo. That's definitely not me, but is there something you wish you were good at, but you're not? Ooh, I forgot about that one. Um, cause I've heard you, um, you know, I always two things. I, yeah, of course it would be two things. I can't just come up with one. One was I never really learned how to sail, mm. but I love boats and I signed up for a sailing lesson in Boston. And for some reason I couldn't, the kids were little or, you know, something happened. So I didn't do that sailing lesson. So I'd love to be a sailor, learn mm. how to sail. Two, I was in choir when I was a kid. And I remember someone's, I think it was my husband, like, you don't really have the best voice. <laughs> well, I have a voice. It's my voice. I, I would love to take singing lessons and discover the voice that I have. Mm. And when I first started sharing on social media, on Instagram, I was fine putting the pictures there, but I could not put my voice out there. So Mm. I've made it within the last two years. I've made an effort to put my voice out there. So that Mm -hmm. has to do with singing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I would love to take a singing lesson. Okay. And and maybe discuss that that's not my talent, but it would be fun. Yeah. You don't have to be good at everything, but, or even pursue everything, but that's so, that's so good. Yeah. I know putting your voice out there is a vulnerable feeling. That's for sure. Totally relate to that. Um, okay. Do you, last question, do you have a creative challenge for my listeners, whether they're a professional artist or there's someone who just likes art as a topic, is there a challenge you want to give my listeners today? Oh boy. Okay. Just, I think the biggest challenge is to be yourself, find yourself, become aware who you are. I'm working on that. So Mm -hmm. I I think it's challenging awareness. I, and then, and then once you are aware, accept yourself, Mm -hmm. forgive yourself. Don't Mm -hmm. rush to just act and then try to backtrack and figure it out. Um, I, I think you know, also just daily practice, daily practice. Don't try to do the whole summer, the whole year. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the baby step concept is so cute. And one of our art queens is always putting her baby steps on there. Mm -hmm. And today she posted and I said, I missed your baby steps because she hasn't had a post in a long time, but I don't think you have to do everything. Just do the little, do the work, do the baby steps Mm -hmm. and then let it go. Mm-hmm. see what comes this whole organic, like just trust mm-hmm. and have, um, it will be okay. Mm-hmm. And you'll figure it out and you can change mm-hmm. courage to create yes. and the courage to do yourself. Yeah. So I, I love it. I didn't know I thought about that question. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Margo. Thank you for spending all of this time with me for the two part two interviews. I got to hang out with you twice. I'm so lucky. And my listeners are so lucky. Thank you for sharing your story and sharing about your artwork and being such a bright light in this world, because we definitely could use that right now. And I'm so excited to see what you create in the next, um, six months, year down the road. And, um, I'm really thankful for this chance to, to talk to you and to share your art with my audience. I know that they're going to really love it and love getting to know you even more. So thank you again. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being such a great um, uh, digger of great questions and listener and a friend. Um, I, you know, it's, you make people comfortable. And so that, that makes me feel like I can just be myself. And that's what I want to be to sh share with other people. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And, um, I can't wait to continue our friendship. I, I value our friendship so much. It's, it's been a treat and a delight and an honor to get to know you. So, and someday I'm going to head to Pittsburgh and we'll, I'll get to see your work in real, in real life. I can't wait. One day so. in person. We will meet. I will yes. meet a lot of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Margo. And thanks everyone for tuning into this week's episode of I Like Art. I hope this episode left you feeling more creative and energized and excited about living your best life day to day, just like Margo is. And um, I will catch you all next week on the next episode of I Like Art. Thanks again, Margo. And I hope everyone here has a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, da -da -da.